Well, I think it's safe to say that we have finally reached peak Russian hysteria in America because according to one CNN report, a seemingly innocent medium was actually used covertly for nefarious reasons by the state of Russia to sow discord among the American people and ultimately tip the scales in favor of Donald Trump and against Hillary Clinton in 2016. So what platform am I talking about here? Pokemon Go. Donald J. Trump will become the 45th president of the United States. Now, I assure you that this is not satirical. This is actually a real report from CNN titled Exclusive. Even Pokemon Go used by extensive Russian-linked meddling effort. Now, they're not explicitly saying that this was done at the behest of Donald Trump to help him get elected in 2016, but this is the underlying implication of the article, because the same allegedly Kremlin-linked groups that helped tip the scales in favor of Donald Trump by releasing propaganda on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and whatnot were the same ones that did this campaign for Pokemon Go. But if you're wondering how it's the case that a game that randomly generates Pokemon for you to catch around your area can somehow be used to manipulate American politics in any way, shape, or form, apparently Pokemon Go was used to promote a so-called Don't Shoot Us campaign. Pokemon? Pokemon, Brooke. No This way. went far beyond, this, it, it did, it went far beyond Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, which is owned by Google, those three companies have been called to a public hearing next month. But this was so much bigger. This account called Don't Shoot Us, which was posing as a part of the Black Lives Matter movement, used all of these platforms to effectively create a, a, an ecosystem where these messages highlighting police brutality, trying to galvanize African-American outrage over police brutality, those would be reinforced across a, a network of platforms and with some influence actually we look and we see you know youtube videos that together were viewed more than 350,000 times a facebook page that had more than 250,000 likes all of these linked to each other linked through an account uh, that was registered to an address that actually turned out to be a shopping mall in illinois that tumblr page promoted a pokemon go uh, competition where if you went to sites where there had been alleged incidents of police brutality and you named your Pokemon after those victims, for instance, naming Pikachu Eric Gardner, if you won that competition, this promotion suggested, you might win a free Amazon Prime card. So every social network me. we think about, every sort of digital platform that we think about, the Russians were trying to exploit those in order to create this network and reinforce the idea that these were legitimate accounts being run by Americans. In fact, they were being run out of the Internet Research Agency, that shadowy troll farm linked to the Kremlin that we've been talking about so much. <laughs> now, something tells me that the CNN host there wasn't really buying his argument too much, but, you know... I can empathize with her because I didn't necessarily understand what he was trying to say there as well because his argument didn't make sense because Pokemon Go, I mean, to suggest that you can use this app for purposes of social engineering means that you don't understand what the app is about. You fundamentally misunderstand what Pokemon Go is about. It's a game. You can't use it that way. It's impossible. But he lays out his argument a little bit more clearer in the article. So they argue the campaign titled Don't Shoot Us offers new insights into how Russian agents created a broad online ecosystem where divisive political messages were reinforced across multiple platforms, amplifying a campaign that appears to have been run from one source, the shadowy Kremlin-linked troll farm known as the Internet Research Agency. The Don't Shoot Us campaign, the title of which may have referenced the hands up don't shoot slogan that became popular in the wake of the shooting of Michael Brown 
used these platforms to highlight incidents of alleged police brutality with what may have been the dual goal of galvanizing African Americans to protest and encouraging other Americans to view black activism as a rising threat. Specifically, the Don't Shoot Us contest directed readers to go to find and train Pokemon near locations where alleged incidents of police brutality had taken place. Users were instructed to give their Pokemon names corresponding with those of the victims. CNN has not found any evidence that any Pokemon Go users attempted to enter the contest. You don't say. Now, CNN provides us with an image as to how Pokemon Go was used. Now, as you can see, it says, play Pokemon Go and win Amazon gift cards. So if you rename one of your Pokemon to one of the names of a victim of police brutality and then head to a Pokemon gym and become the new leader of said gym, and if that gym is near a crime scene, mind you, and once people actually see that you renamed your Hypno to Eric Garner, well, then congratulations, you just became an unwitting agent for the Russian government by spreading awareness about police brutality. That's their argument. So here's what this tells me. Russia does a better job at spreading awareness about Black Lives Matter than our own American government does. That's what this tells me. Also, the underlying assumption in this article is inherently problematic because it suggests that to spread awareness about police brutality and state-sanctioned violence against people of color, that that's somehow wrong, that it's divisive. When, if it's divisive, then that just really demonstrates the need to spread awareness about police brutality because people don't realize that when you look at African Americans and Native Americans, they are killed by police at an alarming rate in comparison to their white counterparts. So the fact that you would even suggest that this is divisive is, I think, offensive to me. And this finding here, I think, is completely benign. It makes no difference uh, in American politics. It made no difference in the 2016 election. In fact, the only way Pokemon Go had any influence on the 2016 election would have been indirectly, and it would have been because of this clip. I don't know who created Pokemon Go, but I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. That was the only feasible way Pokemon Go would have had <laughs> any impact on the 2016 election. And it wasn't because of Pokemon Go, it was because of Hillary Clinton. And in invoking Pokemon Go, she was trying to make herself more appealing to millennials when it came off as pandering, and it made her even less likable. So again, if Pokemon Go influenced the election because of that clip, it was because of Hillary Clinton, not Pokemon Go. So this, I mean... This is a story that is a complete joke. I mean, when you look at the article headline, it says CNN exclusive, meaning that they broke the story and they were they were proud that they broke this story. They have the exclusive scoop on how Pokemon Go was used to sow discord among the American people. I mean, this this makes no sense to me. And in the same week, you have headlines about how Hillary Clinton is comparing the Russian meddling to a cyber 9-11. Now, not only is that idiotic, especially when we see stories being released about so-called Russian meddling like this in the same week, but the underlying implication is that if this was an attack that is comparable to 9-11, which is incredibly offensive, then what should we do about it? Well, we should respond in a way that is comparable to the attack on 9-11. We should perhaps attack Russia. So look, in the end, I think that this story, I mean, I'm embarrassed, honestly, because think about if you're not an American citizen and if you if you see this story, how that makes us come off to the world. They think we're a joke. They're laughing at us. We are making ourselves the laughing stock of the world with stories like this. Pokemon Go cannot be used to influence elections. It's a game. It's an application that is not social in any way, shape, or form. The only way it might be social is if, you know, in, in using this app, you meet people at a gym nearby. But, I mean, nobody's really even playing it. By the time the 2016 election hit, I think most people were done with it. So, I mean, come on. This, this is so embarrassing. But I really, you know, part of me kind of wants 
Rachel Maddow and other neoliberals to start talking about Pokemon Go and how it was used to meddle in American affairs because I just need a laugh because in hearing these people talk about something that they clearly don't understand, it's just funny and it proves what a joke they are. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.